paints is one of the chief processes to dial in for product manufacturing, and today's tour will bring us to a Taiwanese factory replete with a mix of automated and handcrafted painting procedures. In this tour, we'll see robotic arms that allow high precision detailing of small crevices in the product, but trade off with less precise sprayers in raw speed. We'll also learn about ovens for baking the paint, filters for cleaning and reusing water, and getting government environmental clearance, quality control and dust control that would be useful in hair product commercials, and we'll also look at machines for UV or PCB finishes that are also present in this highly specialized factory. Some computer components have more specialty finishes than others. The Yeston Cute Pet video card or Waifu 5700 XT, for instance, not made here, both have some added purely functional glitz and glam for the product. In a more standard way, cases like the Digital Storm Bolt, which is made by Lian Li, have to get their metallic shine and hardened brilliant paint jobs somewhere, and this factory is where those cases are made, along with some other parts that we'll see today. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's Hydro X water cooling series. Corsair's strength is bringing water cooling to the masses, and it has built out cooling solutions with industry leaders to help newcomers get into open loop cooling. Corsair has fittings, adapters, GP water blocks, CPU water blocks, pump res combos, and radiators all available in the Hydro X line. As you can see in our footage, these kits can be used to build beautiful open loop systems. Learn more at the link in the description below. Products don't often start the color they end up. As we've shown in our raw materials factory tour previously, metals arrive in the color that you'd expect. They're big gray sheets of aluminum or steel, and they need to go through the entire metal cutting process, whether that's with lasers or NCT machines, and stamping process before getting painted. Some parts, like internal chassis components, never need painting and can remain their raw metal finish. Lian Li tells us that this is the difference between SECC and SGCC steel. SGCC will apparently corrode if left unpainted and is the more common choice for steel factories in China under the assumption that they will get painted before final production. SECC will not corrode if left alone, we're told, and so is a safer choice for the inside of a router or a switch, for example. A lot of that information is in our tour of how side panels get made, so check that video for more information on the step that precedes this one. Painting is hard to do right. When looking at something like a case, a white finish between plastic and metal parts is difficult to match and requires a lot of back and forth R&D with the painting factories for a step that's before even this painting step. Special finishes like Digital Storm's metallic blue one that's brokered by Lian Li are even more difficult to get right without any blemishes. The factory we're touring in Taiwan today is highly specialized. They do lower volume than some other paint shops, but they focus hard with quality and having space set up for lower production quantities of specialized products. The first step to any factory like this is dust control. This factory had us go through a fairly standardized air chamber to blow away the dust on our clothes, although jokes may have been told by our hosts that it was to get rid of the human malware from visitors. Each visitor has to wear shoe covers as well, and even the floor has a special coating to help dust particles stick to it rather than float in the air. Floor mats and floor coating everywhere help keep the dust on the ground, as a dust particle landing on a product or a panel could completely ruin the paint job. You'll see this level of care taken everywhere else in this factory too. Even one of the conveyor belts that we'll look at later uses an anti-static material for the belt, which prevents dust buildup to the belt surface, and there's a whole lot of compressed air used in this factory. After going through dust control, we arrive at the first step in the factory, which is product preparation. The factory sprays off any products entering the paint line with high pressure compressed air, and also applies an oil coating to the product. We had some translation difficulties here, but we're assuming that it's just a cleaning agent, like rubbing alcohol or similar, although our translator noted that it might be to help paint stick to the surface. The air prep and the coating is applied by hand for some products, but can be done by machine for others. It all depends on machine time and what the customer wants and how complex the product is. This particular product is for a common air conditioning unit in Taiwan and is relatively simple as compared to the more complicated stuff that we'll look at momentarily. For this one, after it's cleaned, it goes straight into the automated spray booth. These types of booths are used for products that don't have complicated designs or deeper compartments, so for a straight sheet of plastic like this, it's perfect. The machine uses a spray nozzle that's moved left to right by a belt, which is hooked up to the paint supply in another room. The nozzle only takes about one second to cover the entire left to right area of the product, but it makes multiple passes for additional layers, and it can slightly adjust to the nozzle angle or the height with each pass. The paint sprayer is programmed by a computer in the room and is set for each product individually. Once one side of the product is coated, the carrier is instructed by automation to rotate, 
and the nozzle arm can be lowered to hit the underside of the product or other areas that were harder to reach. This booth isn't used for as strictly controlled products as some of the others, so the paint isn't stored with as many dust prevention measures as a couple of the more extreme booths that we'll look at momentarily. For this one, a paint bucket and the air compressors are contained within a room walled mostly with steel, secured behind the paint booth waterfall and behind a few doors to keep it away from particulate matter. As for the paint excess and the fume control, the booth has a waterfall in the back supplying filtered water to help absorb the excess paint, the heavier paint sinks to the bottom of the pool, and the water helps keep it loose, preventing gunk buildup. This paint-filled water is drained into large vats and filtration systems that we'll talk about later in this video. Air intake is measured by a meter mounted to the wall to ensure adequate airflow to pull the fumes out of the room, and there's a lot of duct work as well. All of the air is pulled out of the room via duct work with high-grade filters, and the air is sent through a roof-mounted ventilation machine before it's released. We'll look at one of these in an upcoming electroplating factory tour as well, but we didn't get to see the rest of the filtration above the factory here. For this air conditioning chassis component, the last few steps are pretty simple. The parts are picked up on trays and placed onto a conveyor belt, where they go through a long oven for a rapid dry. The oven bakes up to 70 degrees Celsius, but it typically averages around 40 for products. Once the parts emerge, they are grabbed for QC and passed or failed. Minor blemishes, like a blob of paint, can sometimes be sanded off and approved, while other failures might just require a full rework or re-application of the paint. While walking from this part of the factory to the higher end area, we walked by some printed circuit boards as well that are being coded as more of a favor, we're told. It's not a common product. The factory doesn't make enough of these to really make much money on them, but they're helping out anyway. The PCBs are provided elsewhere but they're sprayed with a protective coating at this factory. The shiny, thick coating is important for this particular PCB because it's going to be deployed outside for years. These PCBs go to wind turbines in Taiwan, so the coating is done by the factory to help protect it from Taiwan's humidity. It doesn't have to be paint applied to the factory, despite what they specialize in. It can be any type of coating, like polyurethane or whatever they're using on this PCB. The next section of this factory is where Lian Li hires the factory to paint some of its higher end products, like the Digital Storm Bolt case. Case panels are painted in the same style of booth shown a moment ago, just with more dust control in place for this floor. This booth has been busy painting scooter parts lately, and if you've ever been to Taipei, you know how big that business is. The arm moves the same way, and the water usage for waste management remains the same as well. Once the parts go through the oven on this floor, they're sent downstairs on a conveyor belt to packaging, which again helps with dust control rather than carting it around by hand. One key point with this factory is that all packaging remains on a completely separate floor that's isolated from the painting supply because cardboard box particles get everywhere and ruin products with wet paint. There's a lot of thought that goes into factory layout for dust management and that becomes clear pretty quickly. Another optional step is for products to go through a UV coating process. This floor had two UV coating machines on the same conveyor belt, each capable of different degrees of coating. These machines are used for hardened outer coats of protection, mostly useful for stuff that'll be outside or just might need some endurance against any kind of uh, handling. We're told that these machines can go up to 8H in hardness, but are often at 1 to 2H. We didn't get a full translation on what scale is being used here, but some of our viewers probably know about this process, and you can post your thoughts below. Polyurethane coating is also applied in this facility for products that require it. It was at this point that we asked about units that fail validation. The failure rate, even with all of these controls, is still as high as 10% on some products. This is products that fail but are caught by the factory, so they don't go out to the customer. We're told that the most common causes of failure are uneven paint jobs, scratches in the product exterior as it was provided by the customer, so the factory can't fix that, and errant dust. Most failures can be reclaimed with a light sanding by manual labor, while products that can't easily be recovered are sent through the entire process all over again. Most products can simply be painted over, but some require paint removal first if it's a smaller product where the extra thickness of one more layer of paint might matter. The next line we went to was the most advanced one in the factory. This one is the line leading to the robotic arm, which the factory has had for 10 years now. Products entering this paint booth are sprayed with an air compressor by hand first, one at a time, and then placed on an anti-static conveyor belt to be led into the prep room. Optical sensors in the conveyor belt stop the belt once the line of products reaches the other side, at which point a worker can place them at the machine for being painted. 
This belt is only a few feet long, so it's not really for ease of movement or accessibility of the parts, but more about, yet again, more dust control and fume control. Only using a conveyor belt minimizes the open air between the paint booth and the prep room, and air nozzles inside the conveyor belt keep the dust in the preparation area as the products roll through. The products are sprayed with compressed air one more time on the other side and then coated with a cleaning agent. We'd assume this level of paranoia about quality control only emerges from experience of lost products. The robotic arms articulation here allows more accurate detailing of small areas of the products, but it can't coat as much as quickly. When we asked the factory why they didn't have more of these robotic arms in place, they told us it was entirely to do with speed. For something like an air conditioner front panel, it makes more sense to coat as many at a time as possible. The robotic arm takes about two times longer per product to paint than the first spray booth does. So using this sparingly for complicated jobs is the most responsible way to use it when they're trying to also deal with volume. This drives up costs for the customer, of course, because machine time is everything, but sometimes there's no way around that. The room is completely sealed other than the conveyor belt, which uses air to keep the dust out. Metal walls are used since dust could otherwise work its way into the room through small cracks or pores where walls meet. The lighting is also bright in this room and of a specific light temperature as the technician needs to be able to identify by eye whether the color is correct. The room itself is also temperature controlled and like the others, heavy ventilation is in place. As for the paint, even that's more controlled than elsewhere. The paint buckets are secured in an entirely metal room with limited ventilation. This room is sealed behind two metal doors that seal floor to ceiling, and people only have access to this room to change the paint. Tubes run from the compressors to the paint booth lines, and this factory, as far as paint consumption goes, uses about 1,200 gallons of paint in a month. Although we should note that we're not sure if they're using U.S. gallons or Imperial gallons for whatever that's worth. Once the product is done, it goes to another cleaning bath and a visual QC inspection. The next machine is the most important machine, and it's probably the most heavily used. It's the logo stamping machine, likely in high demand since so many companies just buy stuff and put their sticker on it. Corsair probably has a whole line of logo stamping machines and a conveyor belt of stuff from Ace Attack. This machine requires 15 to 20 minutes alone to warm up, and it needs to be warmed up prior to use. The stamp is made for the logo and it's punched down onto the product, with metallic prints specifically benefiting from this approach. Once stamped, the products are loaded onto a cargo elevator and sent to another floor for polishing and packaging. Polishing work is manual and only used for products that really require it. Polishing wheels are used for the step and technicians work on it by hand. For parts that need it, an additional dark room is available as a gigantic oven for products to just sit and bake. This room can cook up to 200 degrees Celsius, but it can also be programmed for temperature control over a prolonged drying period. If the company determined that certain paints dry better with a temperature ramp up and down, they can program that into the room. On average, it takes about 40 minutes to heat plastic. Finally, everything is packaged and boxed on another floor and then sent out by truck to the customers. The last part of the factory pertains to waste management which is a critical part of a paint factory, especially in Taiwan where the environmental regulations are pretty strict. The government will drop by unannounced and test the water coming out of the factory, so factories like these conform to strict standards. The wasted oil, paint, and contaminated water are all sent through a giant filtration machine that's mounted out the window of the factory. You have to walk through the window to get to it. It's not really meant to be accessed by people. This area smelled pretty toxic and the air was thick with the smell of paint and cleaning agents mixing together. The waste goes through multiple filter machines in series, coming down from pipes upstairs and leading from the paint booths originally. Soap and water are applied as our cleaning agents and then filter after filter after bag after filter are used to clean the waste. Water cleaned in this process will return to the paint booths while the foamed up paint and the oil gets filtered down into collection bags. In translation, the company described this as a concrete-like material that's sent out to a government-certified company for waste management. The waste is further processed if necessary, and whatever can be burned out is burned, while the hazardous waste is disposed of elsewhere. Water is eventually added to the machine from evaporation over time, but it's mostly recycled and reused because, well, one, that's cheaper, and two, they've filtered it enough where they can. It was here that we also walked by a paint prep room, where we learned that the paint comes in a concentrate and has a solvent manually added to it. 
This is where the paint for future spray jobs would be located. The products after all this are finalized. The digital storm panel by Lian Lee goes through painting, UV coating, polishing, sanding, and multiple baking steps, which gets the brilliant shine that it gives off. The factory also showed us a coating that can use for things like anti-fog, common on scooter parts for covering speedometers or meters and preventing Taiwan's weather from making them illegible. Although it wasn't translated, we know enough Mandarin to understand the conversation that took place around this anti-fog coating. Our guide simply asked, Gui ma? And the factory replied, Hang Gui. So it's not cheap to do that kind of coating, but this factory is a specialty shop for a reason. As always, check back for more factory tours, subscribe to the channel, we have a lot of them coming out over the next couple of weeks, and we have a whole factory tour playlist linked in the description below if you want to check out some of our previous tours. Support us directly in these efforts by going to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, or you can get something in exchange for supporting us at store.gamersnexus.net. Thanks for watching, we'll see you all next time.